it's Scott Manley here, and uh, welcome to Scott's Random Eve thing. And with me in the studio, or not in the studio, on Skype today is <laughs> Marlona Sky, who is uh, organizing the flight of a thousand rifters three. So that's three thousand rifters then. Oh God, I could only hope so. <laughs> I think that's how many I used in that little poster. Yeah, I'm sure CCP Veritas is uh, watching and uh, would like to see at least 3,000. I'd, I'd like to see that too. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's really, at the time when I picked uh, the Rifter, this is before uh, they came in and did the uh, Tech One Frigate balance change. And right. uh, the Rifter it was bar none the Tech One Frigate. I mean, it was the Rifter or don't bother. So, I'm sure I'm some people will probably yell at me later for that. But. Yeah. Well, the Slasher's a lot nicer these days with its four mid-slots. You know, it, it, a lot of people are flying those instead of Rifters now, sadly. <laughs> they, yeah, it's, it's you know, the new Rifter. But, I mean, they really did a very good job as far as balancing. You can't, there's not any of them that are just not good for anything. They each kind of are, uh, you know, good for something in particular, for whatever you're trying to do. So they're, they're all really solid ships, you know. Yeah, but you're not going to be flying a Rifter during this event. What will you be flying? What is this event? It's on a <laughs> May 5th? It's on a May 5th. Uh, I found out, I was reading a, uh, a thread, uh, Lalente, I, I, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his name, but it was the whole, uh, on May 6th, uh, a Monday is technically 10 years of Eve. <gasps> and, uh, yeah, so... And I, I, didn't, I couldn't believe it either. I was like, wow, has it really been 10 years? I mean, I haven't been playing for 10 years. It's, uh, yeah, I'll be maybe playing five by that time. You know? yeah, I don't even want to know how long. I think it might be like seven or eight or something for me. But uh, And then there's the... Uh, they're wanting to try to break the uh, max logged in users. And uh, the peak time is, is always on a Sunday. It's just that's the time uh, most people play. So... Uh, they're going to try to do it on May 5th, which is the day before. So, I mean, that's close enough. So, um, and I there and got the thing. I was like, well, there, there really needs to be a reason why people will actually, you know, just, you know, something a little more uh, tangible. Just let me just log in just to log in. So, I got to think, and I was like, well, maybe I could do another Flight of a Thousand Rifters event, and everybody can come kill me, which is usually pretty popular these days. So... <laughs> Killing other um, people is always popular in Eve. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, uh, and, I was, and I don't know, I just got to think, I was like, you know, it's 10 years, I, I need to up the ante. So, um, you know, and then I just started trying to, you know, do some homework and go through some contacts, get a hold of CCP and just really, you know, communicate with it about certain things. And, uh, you know, first I didn't think the Rifter was, uh, I'm sorry, the Nyx was going to happen. But uh, you know, turns out it did, and the the Nix is already bought. It's it's safely stored somewhere. Um, so you managed to get a Nix stored in station now, and and not yeah. everyone that listens understands that uh, Nixes are super carriers, and therefore they're not supposed to dock. They're like the second biggest ships in the game. Yes, they're uh, you know you have Titans and then super carriers, and. Uh, they're original. They're they're designed as like alliance level assets, you know, really big hitters. And uh, one of the uh, downfalls of having one, as part of you know, I guess the balancing part, is you can't dock them. Which means once they're built, they always need a pilot, you know, unless you want to leave them unmanned somewhere. For which to... happens apparently, and yeah. you usually find out <laughs> when they get stolen. <laughs> Yeah, trust me. I looked. I was like, man, I if I'm gonna do a Nix, let me try to find one that's not being piloted. <laughs> you know? So uh, that, but it's it's very rare. So uh, makes for a good story. Let me know if you hear about one. But um, yeah, well, so, uh, going price for a Nix these days, what about twenty bill? Oh, it's it's much higher because they uh, did the mineral change for the drone lands. Oh yeah, it's just kind of uh, trickled down, and it kind of affects everything. So. Um, there, uh, you can look on and find them for, if you get like tech two rigs and I mean, you're talking like 30 billion plus. Okay. So, so that's, if, that's about a thousand dollars in real money, right? If you were to buy um, Plex, that's about a thousand dollars. I'm not really sure what the conversion rate is. Okay. I actually, I, 
I used to, for like a year, I was uh, using this to turn to Plex and just fund my, uh, my accounts, but I'm not really sure what the uh, ratio is. But I, I know it's, uh, it's up there, you know. Yeah, about $40 per billion, I think, because Plex hangs around the 500 million mark right now. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, $20 thereabouts. That's, I mean, that's a lot of money. And so you, <laughs> you've, you have significant in-game assets to cover this, right? Yes. Yes. Because uh, I, mean, I, I was going to offer, you know. Oh, you was going to? Uh, well, <laughs> I'd much rather, uh, if people want to help with the event, I'd much rather have a, a nice, fat uh, prize list. Well, I'll, I'll throw some Plex your way. Okay, well, you know, if I mean, like I said, if anybody, uh, there's two different tiers of prizes, really. There's uh, the first tier, I, I need to come up with a different name, but it's based on a point system. And uh, in the past, I had this complex point system that would take me like months to figure out because I don't know what I was thinking. But um, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yes, much like many things, um, like so, unlocking a, a Nix in Losec and telling everyone to come and kill you. Oh, I uh, yeah, I, I actually when I did it, nobody believed me that I was like, wow, I'm actually having a Nix docked, and it's it's not the first time. It's 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 actually happened. You know, it could happen like uh, a reimbursement for a super cap. Turns out uh, something went wrong, and you deserve to have it reimbursed, and it uh, it'll be put in a station for you. So, um, you know, or I, I'm not really sure, but there's uh, it will be in a low sex station. Uh, so there's none of this. I'm going to be signoing in or anything like that. I'm going to be undocking a nick and. Uh, There'll be an active incursion, so you're going to have devs move it to the right station. Is that the plan? Um, because the I, incursions will block sinos. I I read that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the the previous two, uh, there. Are, I mean, nobody nobody really knows because the incursions they kind of it just really fluctuate. It depends. I mean, players might complete them, new ones might appear. So you really can't, per se, predict it. You can't just sit there and say, well. You can't um, predict where one would be in May 5th, so if you wanted that, yeah. you would need a dev to either spawn one or move you and your assets to that location. So you there's, basically... there's some uh, magic that happens. Okay. CPs then, so but they are, they are co-conspirators in this to a certain extent, but you're still spending yes. you know, your real assets on this magnificent, um, I don't know, monument to... Uh, <laughs> PvP, I guess. I think it's the best looking ship in the game. I mean, I, right there is a close second. It's got to be the Megatron. But Ooh, wow, yeah, I, I, I think the Rock is the best looking ship in the game. But then again, I like square things. Uh, so you, you fly Bantams? <laughs> <laughs> I did for a long time. Uh, I actually, yeah, I mean, I uh, when I started, I really didn't know about the Kaldari missile thing, and so I, I started with a Bantam, went to a Cormorant. Ferox, Rock, never trained any missile skills. <laughs> well, uh, some people have this misconception that Kaldari equals missiles. That's, that's yeah. Well, but... it's, it's just kind of odd to, to spend you know ages and never actually train any missile skills. But yes, yes. Yeah. Well, um, like uh, like we touched on a little bit earlier, the Nyx, the, the fitting, every single aspect about uh, this ship. Is all it's player made. It's CCB didn't just like here you go. Here's the ship. Oh, here's some fits. They didn't just like snap their fingers and it was just spawned out of thin air. These the, everything about this is is created by other players. Uh, you know that they've built. I bought. You know it was it was Saturday. I went. I went to a cellar. Fly like fifty jumps through like hell. You know to get to it. And uh, you know we had to do. Uh, you know, I used a third-party person. To do, I mean, just like you normally would. You know, there was nothing special about me acquiring this Nix. You know, um, did you tell the the seller what you were planning to do with it at the time? No, no, because they might have been a bit protective. Might, you know? <laughs> well, I, I was. You know, it it happens in many things. People find out, like, oh, this is for this X Y Z. Oh, okay, well, now it's. You know, they'll up the price or something. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, I, I just, you know, people don't like their cars to be sold on to be scrapped or crashed or whatever. Unless well, they're selling them to the Mythbusters, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, once once, once I got it, uh, 
out of system and uh, I got the uh, Nick safe. I just convoed him. It's like, hey, you're invited to this event I'm doing, by the way. Or at least when the uh, the uh, article hit on uh, the Matini. So. Yeah. But, uh, and then he was like, oh, wow. And then he, he was asking me, I was like, so in three weeks you're going to need another Nick? So he's already <laughs> trying to set up another sale. So, but, um. I had to say no. <laughs> yeah, I've looked at the prices, but I'm not. I mean, I've, I have the assets to fly, you know, and skills to fly Titans and everything. I have no desire to do so. Uh, yeah. I don't want to be frozen into a box. I sit in station and train skills most of the time these days <laughs> and just sit on my giant pile of money and occasionally throw it at people for fun. Um, so, yeah, what? Um, so that'll be May 5th. And It'll be uh, May 5th. Uh... The time, I believe, is uh, going to be at 1900 GMT. Okay. That is right about the... That's when the Knicks actually in dock. But, um... How many gonna be, hit points will that be? I mean... Um, I don't know yet. Um, it really kind of depends. I mean, I I had a lot of money, so uh, most of it's soaked in this. So, still well, kind of putting, putting it together, so... If you need any cash to pimp it out, uh, I'll throw in for X-type hardeners and stuff if you think that'll help. Well, it'll help. Those are still, uh, you know, up to be sponsored uh, if you really want to. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much a set goes for. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> volunteering now, but I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. You might want to do a little bit of research before you... <laughs> it can't be more than a few billion, right? Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a few billion. They, they don't have but, officer type partners, do they? No, I'm, no. I'm not going to officer, uh, fit this. It's, uh, well, I don't think there's anything that would go that's officer anyway, right? Um, I mean, usually... maybe officer, uh, Enam, but, uh, oh, the, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I mean, that's just, we're, that would just be ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I know people are, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to try to loot and stuff like that. So, and it's part it's of the prizes. It. There's, there's, uh, there's other things, uh, other surprises I have that I'm not going to, you know, reveal until the event's actually happening. So, yeah, I was figuring of just coming down and sitting in a scorpion and, you know, E war burst, ECM bursting everyone. That was my plan. Not it's actually a, killing. It's a low sec, so and then there's going to be people like on previous events, and, and you know, especially the last one, uh, there'll be people that will show up to shoot uh, the people that show up to shoot the Nick. You right. Know, so other and and I might people might show up just to wrap the Nicks. Who knows? Yeah, that's true. That's one thing I did consider because on the previous two, uh, one thing I liked was when I went to siege mode on the Moroses. Uh, I didn't have to worry about people uh, remote repping me. <laughs> I and... don't have to worry about people repping me. How <laughs> yeah. often do you say that in EVE Online? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this one, yeah, if people do want to show up and, uh, you know, repair me to, you know, make it's it where I don't... Sit triage mode and, and rep you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Hey, if, if you happen to have some capital ships, you know, in system, you know, by all means, bring them to the event. You know, it'll be... It'll be interesting for him. Yeah, I guess bringing... You won't be able to bring carriers in if it's uh, incursioned, but... No, the uh, incursion, you cannot, uh, you know, activate a normal Sino. As right. far as I know, you can do a covert Sino. So something like that could possibly happen. There could be guys at a, a snipe spot, and they're sniping, and then, you know, boom, like an Arazu... Hot drop them. Yeah, they could get hot dropped by some black ops, or, you know, who knows? Um... So, but that was uh, one thing I didn't want. You know, it'd be kind of, you have an event and all of a sudden, you know, Pandemic Legion just brings in like 600 Titans and then just DDs, you know, the capital ship, the event ship and the event's over with. And that's just kind of, you know, yeah, I understand the sandbox, but, you know, it's just, that doesn't really make for a good event. So. Yeah. I think the biggest troll would be someone just coming in with a fleet of logistics and keeping you alive forever well um i haven't decided yet but if for some reason after a certain amount of time you know it has to be a good while uh i will just self-destruct the nicks uh, and then take all the loot with you right yeah. or just self-destruct they changed it does it drop loot now i forget uh yeah when you self-destruct now there is kill mail there's, there's loot. loot that was one of the things that prior to i i uh 
didn't, one of the reasons why I didn't want to get remote repped is because, you know, if I didn't die, then there's no kill mail. But now I have control of that, and, you know, so if I really want to, in two minutes, I can sit there and, you know, have the kill mail, and I can, you know, find out the, the score. You know, basically, if you're in any frigate, that that could be fact. So frigates only are the ones that qualify, right? If for, for, for prizes. For, for tier one prizes. Ah. Those are based on points. Oh, okay. Now there's there's going to be other prizes that uh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's other prizes that are situational or like challenge prizes. You know, it could be uh, the little new mining frigate. You know, venture. The venture. Yeah. The venture. It could be uh, five Mackinaws or uh, five Hulks go S- to the uh, venture. Yeah. Yeah, Tons it could be those. something like that. So whichever venture. It's the most damage on the next wins X Y Z prizes or prize. I see. Or it could be uh, we had one last year. It was like whoever the most expensive loss got one rifter. You know, <laughs> you know. And, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm daring someone to come in with an orca or a, a rockwell and get DPS. Yeah. yeah, well, um, yeah right? There's a rockwell in system. You know, and they want to show up. They, they would have to. Yeah, they'd have to be in system. But you know. Yeah. There is a um, Titan kill mail out there with a Rorkle doing damage against it. Yeah, you know, so every once in a while, uh, if you have enough people and you know it's going to die, then you have people that decide to bring in some comedy stuff. And a rock wall can be, you know... It can do uh, decent DPS with sentries. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the other uh, I want to talk about, uh, there's... Uh, whoever gets the final blow on my capsule, which is going to be... It's... Uh, High grade slave set. That is my. Mm. Yeah, it's. I've had it for a while, so you know, it's time to actually make some use out of it. Whoever gets the final blow on that will get a plex. Um, but in to go with the theme of the event, whoever gets the final blow on the Nyx, doesn't matter which ship you are, whatever it may be, will get one thousand rifters. One thousand rifters delivered to a system of their choice, no doubt, right? Uh, well, no. Uh, all the prizes are uh, going to be based at a GDA, the main station. Oh, okay. So, You're not going to go for comedy and deliver one rifter to every station in high sec. I, no, I don't. I don't think it'd be no uh, rifter on demand for you know times one thousand. That that would be a you need though. You know, yeah, r- rifters for life. <laughs> I think uh, I need to get a hold of the the previous two winners on the previous two events and see if they have any left kind of curious if they've burned through them all or I, not I, that would be hard work to burn through i mean unless you were giving them away it's pretty you know yeah and uh, who knows maybe one of them will show up with one of the rifters they won to shoot yeah. me again so that'd be pretty neat i mean i remember at the height of my uh of one of my investment schemes i was blowing through maybe 20 30 ships a day but that was because it was an insurance scam uh, yeah I, re- I remember that yeah okay. and then i folded all that money into planetary you know, interaction, and, uh, or yeah, rather I, NPC stuff. And. I've tried that planetary interaction like twice. It's, like once a year, I'll, I'll kind of give it yeah. a go, and then it just kind of, I don't know, it doesn't yeah. quite do it for me. <laughs> well, so uh, what else is going on in EVE? Right now we've got the CSM elections. Do you have anything, any comment on that? I mean, <laughs> we're about halfway through, right? And CCP are kind of mysteriously quiet. People are theorizing the turnout's rather low. Well, they, they just sent out, CCP just sent out, a, I guess, a, some people are calling it spam, but that's not, technically that's not correct. They just sent everybody with an active account, uh, their character, uh, one mail that to remind them to vote in the CSM, which... I think it's good uh, promoting the CSM. The more people that know about it, the more accurately the CSM will actually reflect the player base. So, um, and if you don't get out there and vote, and then you want to sit there and complain about the CSM later, then, well, that's your own fault. Yeah, I mean, I'm presuming you voted, right? I mean, it's one of these complicated systems where you can, you rank short candidates in order of preference, and then... Yeah, I, I usually I wait until the last minute to do my voting, just... So that way I can get as much information as possible and just to leave the, the window of opportunity for any peti- you know, potential CSMs to screw something up where I don't like it and then they don't get my vote. Ah, so. uh, I see. In case they, they make like a, an out-of-context, a, a terrible 
gaff or whatever. Let's see. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you never know. So, yeah. and in that, I'm I'm just kind of being lazy and well, yeah. being busy at the same time. So, um, I'll, mean, I'll yeah. get around to it. But it's 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 important, you know. Uh, yeah. I know it's a video game, but you know, there's a lot. Of, uh, this is a new CCP. You yes, know, and they're doing what they can to be in tune with the players, and this is one of the uh, you know avenues to do that. So. You know, if you don't like something, if you don't like what, you know, if you don't like the CSMs that are out there now or the CSMs that are running or something, find somebody who does. Convince somebody. Run yourself. Yeah, well, I did that last year and failed terribly. Uh, well, actually, I run under the guise of my daughter. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, last year you were saying about, you know, people saying last year. Oh, wait, um, are you the guy that has the uh, little daughter that. Uh, yeah. Pirating? Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's Sky. That's, she, that's she, great. <laughs> I've, I've I've tried so uh, a couple of years ago, or no, for the previous um, flight of a thousand drifters, I tried to get a video a video of her flying in, but then at that particular moment, uh, as we were as you just undocked, there was oh, like a, a yell yeah. from upstairs saying, "Sky, get up here and clean up this mess now!" And like Amy was oh. really mad at her because she'd left a terrible mess, and so she did not turn up. Uh, and it was oh. such, a, such a shame because she'd been, you know, doing a few PvP videos recently, right? Wow! <laughs> but it's a shame. Uh, she could have made a mess on the, you know, spaceships. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, probably wouldn't have survived very long, but, you know, <laughs> that's just the, I mean, that's the thing, Flight of a Thousand Rifters, there's so many people out there, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get on somebody's kill mail. Uh, it's yeah. just cool to, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to put this out here because I have a lot of random people, like, come and they, they literally start EVE because they see one of my videos, and, you know, I, I kind of want to encourage them to PvP because PvP is the most awesome thing about eve right everything you do really is pvp right you know yeah when i when i first started i actually uh was you know i really tried to avoid it and so that's actually uh it goes back to the the, the reason why i picked a female character to begin with because i wanted to, i thought i was like well if i make a female character people will leave me alone if i could go through like low sec or whatever and people would like oh you know yeah you know and so i already right then i was trying to play the meta game whatever that no that did not you know, oh, everybody was equal, and I was shot just as fast. Yeah. So the meta game but, is what I play these days. I'm a specialist yeah. in that. Um. Yeah, I I, I uh, tried to get in like mining and and stuff like that. And what I, you know, you'd make friends, and then you, I was a uh, low sec, and I would come across pirates would constantly come and uh, you know kill us, and and so what we had to do is like, well, we got to be proactive. We got to you know, be there protecting them. So we would do that, and then, you know, then we'd like, well, let's take a step forward. Let's let's you know guard the gates. And next, you know, I'm like out there looking for quote unquote pirates, and then I'm I'm finding reasons why. Well, he's he's flying, you know, such and such. <laughs> he's ship. flying he must, a hauler. He must, he be, must a be a pirate. <laughs> yeah. So I should you know go ahead and take care of this he's now before it becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, next, you know, I'm running around blowing up everything. Oh, that. Uh, yeah. the circle is complete. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the other thing about um, CSA, you're talking about candidates, you know, saying terrible yeah. things. And, of course, last year, the winner was the one that made the terrible gaffe at FanFest. And then that eventually kind of went into Burn Jita, right? That was the big plan, that if Mitani got 10k votes, they would go and Burn Jita. Yes. He, well, um... Yeah, yeah, that actually was the original plan. He uh, and it became just more more important, right? <laughs> well, I, the the day of Burn Jita, and this is this is just from what I remember. Uh, the day they originally planned was, I think the uh, probably you know the day he was going to return. Win. The return yeah, I guess the day the he was going to return from Iceland or yeah. whatever it may be. But because of what happened there, you know, he lost his CSM chair and uh, and eventually was was banned for 30 days so then it just got to be where you know okay well we're gonna wait until the day i'm allowed to log back in and that's when burn Gita is yeah but this year it is this weekend oh is it you know i i kept hearing about it and uh i haven't actually found anything official so 
Oh, this weekend, oh I should... have I been giving this away? <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> uh, Come to, to Gita this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, the first one that was that was a, that was a great event. It really was. I mean, you know, whatever the motivation would have been, it was an event, and uh, there was a lot of coverage on it. And uh, I can only imagine this one's going to be even bigger. Yeah, uh, April nineteenth to the twenty first. Uh, was it? Was there a reason for that particular date? Um, I think it's just well, Fan Fest is the next weekend, right? Yes, yeah, so April twenty fifth. So yeah, next weekend, and then so you have oh. Burn Gita, then Fan Fest, and then Flight of a Thousand Rifters, which is why I decided that I had to make one of these little previews for what the hell's going on. Uh, you're not at Fan Fest, I presume, because you don't know um, what day it is. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I've never gone to a Fan Fest, and I just. Uh... If if we could buy know. the plane tickets with Plex and the hotels, maybe. Yeah, I think they uh, talked about. So I think maybe it was uh, you could do a ticket. You could use Plex. You can do tickets. tickets. You can buy a lot of events. You can go it's, for the dinners and the orchestra yeah, and stuff. It's, it's going to be big this year. I mean, they they sold, they sold out, out. Yeah, and they sold out fast. They took steps to try to do what they can to accommodate the demand, but the demand is just too big. So that that's it's, crazy. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. I'm wondering what they actually have up their sleeve. So I'm I'm hoping it's something along the lines of uh, uh, removing local or something. But <laughs> oh, I would love that. I mean, there's a lot of suggestions. I, I talked to the I talked to the de devs in San Francisco, and you know, there's suggestions about relocating resources, which is a potentially a yeah. big thing since you know we've had a, a OTEC and it's a related, you know. Um, well, it, stranglehold on moon minerals that's a big thing potentially it, yeah it's the uh, OTEC is pretty much where it's a conglomerate of entities or alliances that are just controlling the price on uh, uh, Technetium which just happens to be the bottleneck for Tech2 products anything that's Tech2 it's got Technetium in it Yep. and right. uh, there's only so many moons uh, it's a small amount so you're able to kind of smaller amount there is the more you can easily control and, it yeah and there's there's no let up in the demand for tech two gear so tech two no. gear is pretty much bottlenecked and, on this limited number of moons right and while the player base may increase the amount of uh moon minerals being outputted uh it's, it stays the same there's only a hundred uh i guess you know i don't know how many like it's produces enough, yeah it's, it's an like hour 32 an hour. moon it's yeah. not yeah yeah you, you can only get 100 per hour per moon Right. And there's only, you know, one in 32 moons, I guess. Rarity 32 or tech um, moons. Or it's actually rarer than that, isn't it? Cause I, I'm not sure. It used to be where, you know, R32 and R64, uh, it, the, the higher the number was, the more rare the moon was. But they kind of changed some things. And that's when tech, technetium became the most valuable moon is when they changed uh, the way... Uh, yeah, Prometheum and Dysprosium used to be the the thing. They're still good moons, but it's just nothing nothing comes close to uh, Technetium. I think they tried to, uh, in the south, or I guess in uh, HBC, they tried to uh, create a... Neodymium moon cartel. Neodymium cartel. Um, and there's a lot of theories on why that didn't quite work out, or... But I mean, the, the really, it does come down to supply and demand. I mean, you have far more uh, neo moons, and demand isn't quite there. I mean, I'm not really an expert. I just kind of know enough to know that I would love to have my own technetium moon. So. Oh yeah, so you could just well. I mean, it's it's uh, it's hard work to maintain one of those because well, it's tech moon, and you just get titans and dreads it, dropped on them all it, the time. Well, that's where I, I disagree. It really depends on who owns it. Like a well, tech if you're part of OTEC. <laughs> yeah, if you're part of OTEC, then that... Then you only have to worry about people that aren't in it. Exactly. And usually the people that are part of OTEC are already established powerhouses yeah. to begin with. So where's the threat? Yeah, I mean, the, they, it's quite common to fight about other moons, but not actually fight over the, the technetium moons, but to keep them in production. Right. They're, I mean, they're... There is exchange of hands that do happen, but nowhere near as what there should be, at least I believe. 
Well, and uh, again, the root problem is let's say let's say they sit there and uh, all right, tech name is no longer you know the bottleneck. Let's say it's uh, something else. Well, then all you're doing is delaying the problem. It really comes down to uh, uh, static. It's a static resource and income, which it can be good for creating. Uh, uh, you know, creating section. conflict, right? right. That's creating the idea. Conflict, which is good, but the other issue that I think compounds that that, that actually goes against that is power projection. And I, I don't want to get into it too much because it's it that goes so. Uh, like, I, I've so been deep. working on optimizing power projection just you know recently, <laughs> making I mean, it even more efficient for us to drop titans on people. Yeah, I mean, you can you can literally go from one edge of the game to the other and like if you have the fuel set up and you have the sino set up as long as you you know set up the logistics once it's there it's virtually it's it's very fast it's there yeah it's very fast it's literally your biggest slowdown is going to be time dilation and session changing right well the session changes are hard on the cluster because if you're dropping large fleets in it has to reload all your skills dogma is like the big bottleneck there yeah. And brain in the box is still apparently coming along, but not ready yet. But uh, speaking of time dilation, I'm, I'm hoping actually we, you know, for flight of a thousand rifters, we'll be experiencing quite a bit of that. Which which means there's a lot of people there. So, well, have you uh, actually I'll... spoke to Veritas about this? Because he would be the one. Isn't he the guy, the kind um, of point man for lag and time dilation? Well. Um... They uh, they're gonna reinforce the system that the event's gonna take place in, but um, so I'm I'm actually gonna be logging in like five hours before the event. It's gonna be freaking early for me on Sunday, and see the CCP. Well, they'll they'll know themselves the DMs or devs or whoever's involved. They'll decide where it's gonna be prior to downtime. Right, and, so you're not picking this. They are. Right. No, no, I, I do not know the system. I truly do. You know, the, the, the Knicks may be docked somewhere right now, but that's just temporary. That's just for right now. The actual for the day of the event, I will not know until the day of the event, five hours prior to that. And then once I know and I get moved there and we're set and we're good to go, that's when I start advertising the exact station, the exact system, where it's at. Right, oh. and everybody starts moving stuff in there, and the gates get blockaded, and yeah, that's when the, that's when the fun fighting begins. start. Here's where the fun begins, <laughs> and and even though uh, there's there's a lot of fighting that does happen prior to when the next is where when the event should right. which itchy trigger you know, fingers, you know, low yeah, set, you get people, people are bored, set up camps, and it's just uh, you know a lot of people will be looking for fights. It's going to be a Sunday, a lot of people are going to be on, so I mean people. As long as you prepare now, get an idea now what you want to take, you know, get things set up, you know, just kind of, you know, just kind of like what, you know, no alliances do when they want to do a move or set something up. It's all about logistics, you know, yeah. so when the event, you find out the system name, already have the ships ready to go, fit, you know, use work as a transport if you need to or a lot of time. And then, uh, you know, do a little bit of research on the, the, the system. Has it got a clone facility in the system? You know, yeah. find somewhere you could set your clone to, so that way, if you do die, which you know chances are, there's a, you know, you're gonna die. You're not spawned back like 80 jumps away, and it turns out you died before you could even you know kill mail or on the Nyx. and you just did all that for nothing. Yeah. You know, so you could say I was there, but you know it's all about shooting the Nyx. So. Um, and you know, if you're a trader. Sell ship hulls and stuff in that station, you will make a killing. Yes, because yes. you know what is ten million credit isk for a rifter, right? <laughs> I yeah, mean, if somebody's like, okay, well, there is a super carrier kill mail I can get on, they will pay. You know, it's it's whatever. Uh, you know, if there's a T one frigate, I'll pay five million if I can just hurry and get into it and it's fit, ready to go, and I don't have to waste time doing oh, yeah, it. Yeah, contracts. So set up contracts, you know, label them, flight of a thousand, you know, whatever you want to do. It's, I mean, it's free market and, you know, it's a sandbox. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's going to be cool. I'm legitimately, legitimately excited. 
Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what else is going on. Oh, uh, have you been looking at the the ship rebalancing? Battleship to your side is is like the hotness of discussion right now. Yeah, you're Galante and uh, well, oh, I think I'm Kaldar. Oh, okay, but you've been sorry. You you may be. Um, I guess you were talking right. about your love for the Megathron in the Nyx. I naturally presumed. Um, yeah, your I love actually, of the Galante. <laughs> it's uh, it really goes back to the Dominix, I think. Uh, oh, because when I first started the game, I uh, you know was training up for you know Caldari battleships, and I liked the idea of the little drones going out there and doing your bidding. And uh, you know, I'm sitting here like using Tech One variety light drones, and then somebody's like, "Well, if you like drones, you need to. This is the ship for you." And at the yeah. time, this was actually. Three months before Red Moon Rising, and at that time there wasn't drone bandwidth. Uh, you could launch your entire drone bay. So you Ooh. had like Dominic's monsters out there that they would have Nosses in the high slot. This is before the Nos nerf, and it was Nosses act were almost as effective as Newt. They would just keep taking cap no matter what, no, no matter, matter what your cap level was, no matter how your cap level was, and they would keep taking cap until there was none left to take from the enemy. So, and then in the mid slots, the Dominics is, this was before the ECM, there's been a couple ECM nerfs, but uh, this is several nerfs back, I mean, multi-spectral ECM were like the thing to put in your mid slot, and I can't stand ECM, it's, I think. <laughs> you hate ECM as a I hate ECM, there's only one other person I think that hates it more than me, but I, I think I give them running for money. Does this mean you're not going to use the ECM burst on your Nyx? Oh, no, I'm going to be using that like I'm... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You hate it unless you've got it, right? I know the type. Well, there, there's a difference. There's a difference. Uh, ECM burst means you just... If you get hit by it, you lose your lock. And a uh, remote ECM burst on a super capital, basically, it's it's a little different than what uh, you fit on the battleship or another ship. You know, um, if you really want to cause pain, you should fit a target breaker on that <laughs> on your Nyx, right? You can only fit those on battleships. Oh, you can't! You can't fit them. On, I thought I, battleships. Oh, wow! It's right now they only have a battleship specific target breaker, which <sighs> I think that particular module. Uh, I think it really has potential. Uh, I don't think it's quite iteration on it is not quite where it needs to be. Um, I think it would open the door to where we can get away from large fleet fights where it's you have one guy telling hundreds of guys, okay, shoot this guy. And then everybody locks that guy and shoots and then it just you go down a list. And really I mean there is some other deciding factors, but then it starts to become a game of alpha and which side has the most combined effective HP. And right. it just it's you know, it, it gets kind of predictable. But if you have a giant fleet battle where you have to start making individual choices, and you might have a fleet commander that might say, "Okay, well, we need to focus on those guys. You know, you know, take those guys down." Instead of even calling specific names, you have wing commanders and even squad commanders instructing those people, like, "All right, we're going to try to focus on this particular guy," because maybe uh, when you have a couple hundred guys trying to lock or shoot somebody else, if they're using this target breaker, uh, they'll lose their lock, or once they have it locked, then they'll lose it, and then they have to do it all over again. It's not quite there yet, but uh, right now it's still alpha is the force. Uh, alpha effect. is pretty, sp I mean, I have been in fleets that have been able to alpha, you know, capital ships, you know, just because they've got so many maelstroms. Ah, and, I, uh, uh, artillery is... And yeah, we went, uh, for a while we were switching back to twelve hundreds because it would you know we would be able to cycle but, faster between yeah. targets. That was a, that was the most important thing. And, and I think that's when the rocks started to become popular because you eventually you hit a, a certain critical mass where okay, we have a certain we, we already have more than enough alpha. Let's let's get something that has a little bit less alpha. They can still alpha the ship, but we, we can have cycle a higher faster. High, yeah, so. It's just like when you're trying to outfit your ship, you're trying to find the most optimal configuration. No. And so, but anyway, the the Galanti ships on the rebalance, they got a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, I don't know, anger I felt. I don't know. A lot of people seemed to be kind of disappointed or angry with the, the Hyperion and the Megathron and 
Well, it's funny when you read those threads, you'll you'll see one person they'll talk about. Okay, well, this ship is useless now because it can't do this. You know, it can't be a long range platform. In the same thread, you'll have another guy say, well, this ship is useless now because now it can't be a short-range platform. Right. Or you'll have the exact opposite. You'll have two people arguing over, well, no, this ship is meant for this because check out this fit. And the guy's like, no, you're doing it wrong. It's meant for this. And it's a completely, it's, it's a different setup, and it goes about the combat a different way, and it's, it's a viable setup, and they're both viable setups. And that's when you start to know you're actually on to something. When you have... You know, several people talking about, no, this is the best way to fit it. And, you know, you have a ship that's not, like, just locked into a certain niche and, like, well, you fit it this way or everything else is crap. So, um, the only the only ship right now, as far as Galentes go, that I'm not quite too happy with is the Dominix because... It lost its uh, hybrid bonus, didn't it? Well, I, I was excited they were going to turn it into where all the bonuses on the ship were drone-related, but... I just didn't. I didn't care for it to be tracking an optimal range, which that sentry drones basically, right? Yeah, it turns it into a drone sniper, right? But here's the problem with if you're a sniper, right now being a battleship sniper is it's that's a tough gig because the way probing is right now, you can easily get probed out. So um, the the competition it has is like why take a battleship sniper uh, if there's tier three. Right, because the tier threes are mobile, and your Dominix would drop his drones, and then it it could leave the drones. You have two two choices. Either you you have to, you know, when you're sniping, it's all about being aligned and ready to warp off in case they get probes on you, they get a warp in, whatever it may be. You have to be mobile. If you just sit there, you're you're asking yourself to get bombed. You're asking yourself to get, uh, you know, a group uh, of ships that are a close range fit, they're going to be doing more damage, newts, all kinds of things that you're not set up to handle is going to get land right on top of you. So you need to be able to be aligned, be able to be mobile. Dropping sentries and being mobile at the same time just literally means you're going to be able to do it three times at max and then you're out of drones. Right. That means, now what do you got? You know? You have a very because, limited amount of ammunition, I guess. Exactly. It's like you're, you're just a three trick pony and that's it. So, um, but, you know, again, maybe the, the Dominic's, I mean, does, you know, that doesn't mean it's a, a sniper. I mean, I don't know why people are saying that it's, it's now it's meant to be some century sniper. Um, because it doesn't get the blaster bonus. It means the high slots, it still has six turrets, so you can still use, you know, hybrids. You can use any kind of turret you want or you could use it for utility slots. So, uh, you could go with remote rep Dominics and stuff like that. And you're not, when you do things like that, you're not like, well, because I'm using remote rep, now I'm not even getting you know, half my ship bonuses because I'm not using them. So, right, that um, was always a feeling I got. <laughs> the yeah, bonus is there. I actually, uh, um, I like the, uh, when they, not too long ago, they decreased the power grid usage, I think, on blasters. And uh, there's it's it's kind of a comedy fit, but it's actually it's amazing amazing damage, and uh, it's uh, a Dominix that uh, it really came out when they came out with the drone modules for damage and other things. Right, uh, seventeen hundred DPS Dominix fits I've well, seen. Which if is you overload and you have perfect skills, I I've got max skills for Galente, uh, yeah. guns, but I, I have a Dominix that it's it's not unknown, but. It's basically it's uh, eighteen hundred and ten DPS before you use wiring. Right, that's, but, that's the void, and you overload your guns and ogres. Right, but, I mean, I've, I've, it's like hard to get vindicators up to that level, right? I've, yeah, I, yeah, I, and you, you know, you shield buffer or whatever, and it's just kind of, uh, it's great if you're looking for ganking. If if you're <laughs> you're looking for a couple of dominics, you need somebody to put down massive damage for, for you know at a, a good price. And you have other ships that can hold them down while you, you know, beat them up. Uh, you can lay down a tremendous amount of damage for a Tech One hole. I mean, right now it's uh, the change as it hits, so it's technically a Tier One battleship. So, so the um, cheapest chips right now, right? Yeah, it's the che- it's one of the cheapest battleships out there. That uh, I think it is actually the cheapest. Yeah, it's uh, you know, outside of the Vindicator. It can put out the 
most. And again, I'm sure somebody's going to probably going to be like, "Look, here's where you're wrong." But <laughs> as far as I know, it outside of a Vindicator uh, is the highest DPS ship. Yeah, I love my Vindicator, but yeah. Again, I mean, you got to be close. So. Yeah, you got to be right on top of things. I, I but um, yeah, I also liking the the Amar rebalance they've done, but getting rid of the you know pointless capacitor use bonus to lasers. Yeah. is the way forward, really. Uh, they've actually cut the power usage on lasers, but they're still pretty heavy power use. And they're, uh, Yeah, they're doing a really good job. I mean, the battleships, that's that's kind of... I think that's what everybody was waiting for. When they announced that we're going to get rid of ter- uh, you know, the tiers, we're going to rebalance everything, and and we're going to start you know, with uh, Tech 1 frigates first and work our way up. Everybody, I mean, that's that's good, because you're, you're taking a ship that a lot of people are going to get their hands on from the beginning, even new players. So new players are going to have a better experience faster instead of like, well, they did it backwards, and it's like, well, i got to wait until I can fly Tech 2 ships before I can experience a balanced ship. Yeah. So, but I, I think Battleships is... Uh, everybody likes flying them, you know. It's, it's, uh, they're, you know. They're the money makers. A lot of people just fly these things in missions all the time to make money. I mean, I know what it's like. I don't want to do it anymore, but... Well, it's as long as they can find, um, you know, you got small small gang warfare. You have like solo play. You have, I mean, I I joke around that solo is dead, but I mean, there's videos. People are able to pull it off, but it's just it's all about picking the targets. I mean, that's really yeah, what it's all about. Target, uh, research your target. Like you know, open up Eve Kill uh, as you're hunting them, or as they pop up. You know, I'll have Eve Kill open right there in the search bar as my homepage. And as soon as I see something that I think, like, I'm going to try to find them, I'm already putting them in there. I'm looking at the recent ships they're flying, knowing what they can fly, what they can kill, who's flying with them, you know, who's, what, what alliance are they in, you know, and just try to do as much research as you can as fast as possible to decide, you know, is this a good target to try to engage? Um, so, I mean, you can do solo play. So as long as there are ships that... You know, there's there's not going to be a ship out there that okay, it's good for giant fleet combat, and it's also the go-to solo ship. I think that would just impl- say that that you know, why fly? Let's say the mega the mega was like that was the Megatron. It was great at like mid solo and large fleet scale. Uh, it's like why fly the Hyperion when the Mega's there? Why fly the Dominix when the Mega's there? Right. So you need to have some that are that are viable. They're not worthless in all the other size scales of combat, but they kind of excel at a particular one better than the other ones. Yeah. You know? So it adds a nice little variety, and uh, that's, I think that's great. I, I hate seeing, like, it's great to look at, but I hate seeing uh, giant fights where it's everybody's flying. It's all rocks. And it's all... <laughs> Oh, like you know, it, it, I I have to say yeah. there is something really impressive about an entire fleet of rocks, you know, plus a well formed support fleet. But just you know, watching a whole fleet of rocks unload their you know rail guns into some target is very photogenic, very impressive, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice to see you know well thought out small gangs that are you know synergistic. It's- yeah, synergy is very important. Uh, the way the game it's the way the game has been, I think, since the inception of it. But um, it, it would be interesting to see people can bring a ship, and you know, let's say they only get to fly one race, and it's like, well, bring you know, battle. They could pick a ship, and it's going to be useful somehow in this particular fleet fight. And you're like, well, I'm not going to be great at going out there and dealing damage or whatever, but I could sit there and focus on other aspects of the of the fight and help contribute. And th- th- that would be great. Uh, are we there? You know, no, we're not there. We're not going to be there anytime remotely soon, unless for some reason something revolutionary happens. Wow, uh, yeah. I mean, and, um, yeah, I mean, you've got the, the, the Mimitar, of course, they they got a whole thing. The flying garbage can became like a torpedo boat, I guess, or missile boat, finally. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, there's a couple of ships, and I guess Mimitar was cursed with it more than others, but having a split weapon system. And one of the problems you have with that is when you're like, okay, well, it's going to have bonuses to torpedoes, and it's also going to have bonuses to uh, 
projectiles. And you can like, pick one or the other, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, so let's say if you want to, like, well, I want to use both, you know, so I can have... The problem, though, is, is when you start putting damage... Uh, damage mod mods on, right? That's Yeah. That you, you can actually, pick one or the other. Yeah, it's it's kind of... I could do maybe a couple here, a few there, and just really... And the other thing is, too, is uh, even though it added some to some uniqueness to it, uh, is, uh, is, is very skill-intensive, especially when you're comparing turrets to missiles. You know, you got one ship that's going to be using turrets and missiles, and it's not just training for those particular, you know, auto cannon and torpedoes. Now you've got to train up all those support skills, and, and missile support skills and turret support skills are not the same. They don't translate over. There's only, like, two skills in the entire thing between them, you know, weapons upgrades, advanced weapon upgrades, and, like, something for CPU that it's related that actually translates to both. So it's super skill intensive. And then after you've got it all trained up, it's still, it's okay. You know, it's iconic, but is it, does it give all the, does it give the oomph that is worthy of all that time? Right. You, you know, I mean, when the, the Naga was originally being prototyped on Singularity, it came out with, uh, it had an extra bonus, so it could either be fitted with torpedoes or rail guns, and it actually had an extra bonus slot so that it could do one or the other fairly. And I was kind of disappointed to see them take out the, the Torp uh, Naga. That would have been, well, it would have been the only ship at the time with uh, eight, eight missile launchers, uh, other than the state-issue Raven. It's uh, but it's, I think the uh, they're adding uh, the Drake. The Drake Navy eight, issue. Yeah, it's going to have eight. Uh, Unbonus though, right? Or no bonus damage bonus. Can't remember. Uh, I think it might be like rate of fire. Or something. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, the balancing there overall, I mean, I, I definitely it's great. I mean, there for a while, um, you can probably remember it was like after they did Dominion, they had some sort of light ship change, and then it was just. Uh, the Eve players were left with the ships in their their current form for a couple of years, and it it was uh, it was bad. You know, at first uh, when these kind of changes happen, uh, it's great. But well, then the, the Dramiel was dominant for so long after it, Dominion. It, that was the one. You forget the fly. You did not fly anything else. I mean, I, I'm not sure if the uh, torp um, the what? bombers were torpedoes. At the time, oh yeah, just... no, they were, they were, yeah, they were at that time. That change was made uh, around about Quantum Rise, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, it was, it was, it was Dramel. It was you fly Dramel. That's it. You had, you had lots of drones. You could dual prop it. Uh, you know, respectable DPS, selectable damage Maybe. type. It was everything you could possibly want in a frigate. And everything else, if if you were flying any other frigate. And you came across a dra uh, a dram, you you had to get out. I mean, yeah, yeah every once every thousand battles, you have one guy like, oh, I killed this dram, you know. Right. And, I I killed a dram in my badger, right? <laughs> yeah. That totally wasn't set up. <laughs> no, no, it, it actually it wasn't. I guess some people at the time they were like, oh, there's your alt and blah blah blah. But um, I mean, prior to that, I'd been killing people with the badger before. I killed a couple battleships and. I started off with uh, frigates, and I probably shouldn't have picked on targets I was. I was kind of gearing towards younger players because I was experimenting. And uh, it just uh, I just started increasing the ship size that I would go after. Um, I mean, I lost a lot of them, but... But they're, they're badgers. They're cheap, right? Uh, yeah, and I think... Uh, and I guess they have a lot of mid-slots, so a lot of EWAR or something. Um, yeah, the uh, the uh, the setup I had was um, I had an afterburner, and I fit a scram, two webs, and tool cap, two cap injectors. This is the original one. And then I had like uh, an armor rep, and then like uh, I think dual mag stabs. I mean, in the high slot, it was just the uh, a neutron blaster and a newt. And with that, you could just perma run everything with like cap two hundred. You could fit like you know a billion of them in there. So you don't have to worry about running out, and you would just literally keep going. And it was surprising that um, the, the people that would actually come after you, because they would see it, and then they would... Uh, I, I guess I like the psychological aspect about it. They would say, oh, it's a hauler, whatever. I'm just going to go ahead and take whatever I have, you know, this 
particular frigate, even though it's set up to do level two missions, is going to go kill this hauler. Awesome. And they would aggress and they're, they're scrammed, they're dual webbed, and they can't, you know, get they, away from me. So and it's it just, just a question of your single weapon burning yeah, down their shields. Yeah, the newt was, was key because the, the small newt's permanent running and uh, a small newt on a frigate, just one that doesn't stop, will, it does significant damage to what that frigate can do. Um, so ships that were dependent on capacitor, you know, uh, like, you know, laser boats or hybrids. I mean, once they're newt out, then it, it kind of became a game of, like, just trying to tank them and last long enough for them their capacity to eventually wear out. Right, I mean, with a Dramiel, its main we both its weapon systems are not cap dependent, right? It's auto cannons and drones, so it right. know, it surely should have stood a fighting chance, but apparently, no. Well, um, the, the thing is, when, when that particular, when I sit there and kill, I think I killed one of his drones, and then uh, and then I actually went after him. But I think he he logged off. Like if he hadn't have logged off, <laughs> then. Uh, what? Yeah, because I think at the time, like when you log off your ship, any any modules or anything like that, like a particular like a, a shield extender, any kind of skills that increase attributes, like you know, that increase your armor, hit points, or your uh, uh, you know your right your, your, your tank shield right. amount, right? Uh, and I think that's what pretty much killed him was by him logging off. Those just, is, those I, turned off, right? But nowadays well, they stay on while you're on on field. Well, the skill points. I think at the time the skill points no longer apply when you log off. So while his shield, may, let's say for the sake of argument of numbers, let's say his uh, shield hit points was one thousand two hundred fifty, you know. So and shields they kind of reach a national regen around like thirty three percent or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's usually once I kind of get down there, that's when I would overload the actual to the get region. them over the hump, basically. Right. right? Get over the hump. So once he logged off, he went from 1,250 shield down to 1,000. And that means the hump is now smaller, and it means you're able to get over it. So, and that, and, and uh, I don't know, I think he's just a shitty player, so... Uh, it happens. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the thing I always like to point out is, you know, you're describing looking at Eve Kill. That is not a skill that depends upon your character skill points, right? That is just straight up experience and people are all like oh if you haven't had your character training for you know five ten years then you can't compete and that's totally well, not true years, right? years ago like when i first started uh the first thing that was told to me is like all right you need to train your learning skills if you're serious about the game and you want to well, be that playing was true <laughs> yeah it was, it was uh so i sit there and i wanted to have fun so i decided <sighs> to for a brutix uh uh, initially, and then after that, I spent like the next month and a half just training learning skills. So, so depressing. Yeah, and and one of the one of the nice things about the game is is like when you complete a skill, it, it's such a great feeling because it <laughs> will unlock new ships you can fly, and things you can fit, uh, or you new know, skills so, you can train. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's it's a satisfaction that comes with it, and that's that's really important when you're you're a, a younger player. You know, nowadays, like, you know, you said, like, oh, 56 day skill? Okay, let me start that. Yeah, being it's almost there. kind of a, yeah, it's a hassle. So, um, uh, when they, I used to be uh, against the idea of removing the skill points or the, the learning skill points because, you know, I had went through it and this is before I really started to kind of understand, you know, exactly how bad it was. And then I was like, well, I went through, so that means they got to go through. And you start to become like, ah, when I went to school or... Yeah. Uh, when I were a lad, our yeah. father would make us eat... No, no that's, that's Monty Python. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it became like that. And so you're like, you know, I suffered, they should suffer. But then, I don't know, I, I really... I like it when new players start the game. I like to see the, uh, the, the player base increase. I think it's great to get new people in there. I mean, you know, I've I, currently I'm in null space, and you start seeing the same faces. You know, I see I see new faces, but as far as the name, uh, you know, players, uh, you know, alliances or whatever, it's all kind of they're kind of the same, you know. And so it's nice to see you know fresh faces show up. It's gonna be new ideas, uh, new tactics. It's it's gonna be everything about that is good. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're gonna be you know bad as far as like the game, as far as you know winning fights and stuff. 
But that's only temporary. The biggest thing you can do to improve upon, you know, becoming a better player is just simply, you know, PvPing as much as possible within your budget. You know, fly to, I mean, before somebody telling somebody to fly Tech One ships was like that was stupid. That was counterproductive because they weren't balanced. Now they're good. I mean, right they, now they are solid, and it's the Tech Two ones which are kind of looking poor in comparison. Yeah, they're solid. I mean, I uh, when they changed the frigates, I. Uh, I forget which fight I was in, and there was a guy that, uh, I think it was a Kestrel, like, and landed on him, and I forget which two ship he was in, and he just kind of, he didn't think nothing of it, and he just, you know, hit approach, and he just thought he was just going to sit there and just lay waste to it, and it was a, a person that just didn't pay attention to the forums, and um, I kind of wish it wasn't quite such a requirement to keep up the day on the forums. I think uh, they could do a better job of somehow incorporating changes or anything that's important. Well, I was thinking of making videos about these things, but, you know, that's effort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just catch your uh, weekly digest of what's what no longer works, right? He just wasn't with the times. He didn't understand about the changes, and that Kestrel just took him to town and kicked his ass. And he was just dumbfounded. He was like, how did this happen? This is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And I just laughed. I was like, "Man, you need to like learn to read the patch notes or something," you know. So, uh, I mean, they're good now. So you can have new players come in and they they can pick a ship, and it, it can't, you know, it's a respectable ship. It, it do something. They, they can point at any Tech One frigate and use it. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with any of them, right? Yeah. Well, it's, you know. Well, I mean, there is, but there's. I mean, know, I they're viable. They're, yeah, they're respectable, I think, is the best way. You know, you can't just dismiss them. You can't dismiss them like you used to. Right. You know, same thing with, with cruisers. They're, they're good. Um, you know, you get two Tech 1 cruisers, and if you're in a Tech 2 cruiser, you're going to be in trouble. It's no longer just, well, let me just burn through this one and just casually wave them away. It's no longer the case. So uh, back to the battleship. Now we're, we're, now we're back to something that actually... Not only uh, young players can fly, but also older players are going to be flying. You know, so yeah. it, that's where you have a lot more interest right now. The higher skilled players, even though uh, the Tech One ships are newly balanced, you know, per se, there's still chances are they're going to kind of fly Tech Two, you know, because they're going to be. It's got a little bit more edge, you know, better tank, things like that. You know, more bonuses. It can do a little bit more, but uh, you know, on Battleship, there's no tech too really right i mean there's black ops and there's marauders but you know those right. are role specific you know for they're, missions they're or very black ops, right well, their battleship is going to be a very common interest between young players and new players so that's why there's a lot of interest like i think i haven't looked uh, today or this past weekend but i mean those threads especially the galente one yeah they made some more revs to the the galente stuff i i believe i th haven't checked, but I think the Hyperion may have lost uh, a gun or two. Which uh, is... Hyperion, yeah, it was a, it was an eight gun boat, right? And that... they removed was it two guns or one gun? I, I think it may have been two. I'm just looking yeah. around for confirmation. They, I think they removed two guns, one of the high slots, and so now you're down to you're down to six guns in a utility slot. But what they did was they increased the damage from five percent. 10% on a large hybrid, I, I think. Yeah. So what that effectively did is I think it gave it a little bit more firepower or at least enough to match the previous version. But now you have that utility high slot. It's very useful for like smart bombs to get rid of those goddamn ECM drones that need to be removed from the game. <laughs> no, or, I want tech to ECM drones. Oh my god, no. <laughs> but that's a business decision. That's a business thing I'm pushing. But, uh, you know, it's, it, could be, it could be a Sino, you know, to get hot drive. It's just, yeah. it, there's a lot of uses for utility slot, which is why it has that name. So, um, you know, opens the door for that. Um, it's, I think the Hyperion, again, I haven't looked uh, the last few days, but it's, it looks very solid. It looks like it's, it's going to be a good solo mobile, small gang warfare. Uh, the Megatron looks like it's going to be a little more... Uh, Fleet style stuff. Yeah, um, it lost some drone bay, but again, like if you're a sniper, 
not really doing the drone bay stuff too much. The, the, whereas the Hyperion gained a larger drone bay. So, so it can fit on uh, heavy drones and get right in your face, right? Yeah. A- another problem that Galante was suffering from was when it comes to fleet fights is, again, like back to the whole Alpha and Effective HP, um, you know, it really, on some of them, they, it, it needed another low slot to be able to be competitive with other race uh, large fleet fight ships. Right. Um, well, you know, Galante suffered because they you know, the devs saw them as being, like, active armor tanking as opposed to the Amarians' kind of passive buffer tank. And yeah. the active armor tank just doesn't work, right? Well, the the Minmatar, of course, have the active shield tank thing going on, but they also have artillery, and, and Alpha was enough to offset that, you know, wasted bonus. Yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, was even, what's the nickname? I think it's Thundercats. Which is basically, I think it's an Amar hull with artillery. So you got something that has a ton. Of, and again, I could be naming it wrong, but basically, it'd be like an Abaddon, where as out of all the battleships, has the most effective hit points, a huge buffer of hit points, and then you have put on eight artillery guns. Right. As long as you hit that critical mass, if you have enough people, you're going to have enough alpha, even though the guns are on bonus. Now you got the most effective HP, you got the most alpha, so you get to kind of have your cake and eat it too. But I, I can't remember why those aren't really being used much anymore. Well, but... uh, Maelstroms are, you know, were the thing, I guess, because uh, they actually had a bonus to their guns. But yeah. I, I remember a while back before the tier three battleships came al- or battle cruisers came along that people were using uh, apocalypses with uh, 1400 artillery for suicide ganking. Because oh, that was yeah. the cheapest hull that you could put eight fourteen hundred yeah. uh, mills on. And right, you you could do the eight there, and it's it's kind of it's related to typhoon. I mean, people talk about a disco phone, and uh, I always wonder why, like why why is it always the phone? Why do I say disco phone? But it's because out of the cheapest battleship hulls, the tier ones, that that was the only tier one battleship hull that I think uh, had. Uh, where you could fit eight smart bombs. You could do it on an Armageddon, but I think uh, the Armageddon is oh. not as agile. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. May- I think, well, the Armageddon is probably more expensive than the Typhoon. I don't remember specifically. It's, it's, I think it's, it's a good sign when you kind of look back and certain things no longer apply. You know, right. The metagame changes, balance changes happen. You know, like when, when these battleship changes go to happen, it's, it's going to be. A race. It's like let's find out what's what's going to fit our play style now for whatever alliance or coalition it may be. Right. I mean, you know, the patch day it could you know if people wanted to, that could lead to big changes because if you're prepared and your hostiles aren't, then there's an opportunity. There's a window there. Yeah. Exactly. Like uh, another change uh, is kind of worth mentioning. I think uh, is the. Uh, Naglafar, you know, vertical. Oh my, yes, uh, three guns. Three well, t- well, technically it's going to be two guns. And what they're going to do oh. is they're going to remove the turret slot. And they're just going to give it a roll bonus of uh, plus 50% to capital ship artillery. Which is effectively, it's going to feel like three turrets. Oh, yeah. I, th- I thought I saw a DB dump that had three guns on it. But I guess well, maybe they, maybe they I, I dropped off that. I well, again, you you have you, the, the bottleneck there is the art department, and, and nothing against them. I, I yeah. art, but it's like it was the, for so it. long. That was the thing. That was their so excuse. It's, it's going to go from and it's again that, that's a dreadnought with a split weapon system that just suffered. It just wasn't, and it used to be worse actually. Uh, they before they did uh, iteration on it like a couple years ago, where you could kind of armor tank it or shield tank it. I mean, it was crap. You know, so, but it was vertical. Exactly. That's why I made it so awesome. But <laughs> right. uh, now, now it's it's vi- it's going to be a viable dreadnought. Now there's even talk of like now you're going to have alpha dread. You know, you have hero cats, which is basically a tempest. You know, it's got a bunch of auto cannons and a bunch of newts and things like that. And so I think if you get enough of these these uh you know naglafars, I think it's going to be amazing. That's going to be one of those shots that we're talking about where it's a whole bunch of the same ship. Uh, a bunch of naglafars that can put on artillery that's going to be a tremendous amount of alpha. So 
if you know you get like an enemy super capital tackled or something like that, and you need to kill it fast before they're able to break it free. You're gonna drop a shitload of those on it and just like, alpha the shit out of it. Well, I mean, I don't know what the cycle times are on those guns, but you know, does it? Who knows? Who cares? You know, <laughs> great. Just the so, notion of alphaing, you know, super caps. <laughs> what? You know, it's so beneficial to be up to date, especially these days on changes that they're making for the show. Right. I mean, this is it. I mean, you know, it's Eve is one of these games where. It's evolving all the time now, and and you gotta keep up with everything, or you, you know, you lose your edge, you know, and you start talking about target painting dreadnoughts and things like that, right? Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> let let's not go down that. that. Yeah, let's not go down that route. Um, but yeah, I think I think we're getting on here. We should probably be uh, saner. Yeah. We should probably be closing this thing down. Um, so May fifth, you'll yeah, be there. So May- I, May 5th, Flight of a Thousand Rifters 3, I will be undocking a NYX supercarrier from a low sex station with an ongoing incursion. There's going to be prizes, uh, two types of prizes. You know, uh, uh, you know, you could sit there and go and read the article on uh, the matini.com. There's also a thread on the EVE Online forums under the uh, events and uh, player gathering thread. I think they moved it at General Bastards. Um, but, uh, you know, you can find all kinds of information there. And, uh, and again, if you want to sponsor anything, you know, just contact. I will. Yeah. If it, it still needs a tank, if, if you're, if you're, I, you're I've got a, I'll throw, I don't know. I'll figure out what, what I can do best, but, uh, I do have a pile of plex that I can throw at you well, one way or another. As, as long as Sky keeps getting to play, I'm happy. Oh well, she's actually just thinking she's too old for it. She told me that the other day. Oh uh, well, you got to <laughs> convince her to come out one last time. This year. I I sh- I hope so. I hope so. I'm I'm actually hoping to get her to uh, burn Jita this weekend to kill some people because that's, that's always you true. know amusing. So yeah, burn Jita is this weekend. That's uh whatever the 18th, the 19th. I don't know. But next weekend is uh, fan fest. and then fan fest is after that, and then the weekend after that is flight of a thousand rifters. And you are Merlona Sky. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>